Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Culture Hour. Today, we have a guest that I'm going to let him introduce your, yourself in just a minute, John. But I'm thrilled to talk to our guest today about the executive coaching side and what that means inside of a workplace culture. So my name is Shelley Smith. I'm the founder of Premier Rapport and the founder of the, the Culture Hour. Everything that we talk about has to do with the passion of my life, my obsession, workplace culture. So we're going to dive straight in today. I believe we're on episode 30 or 31 here. So I hope you enjoy and keep tuning in and keep asking those questions. You can uh, submit your questions by just going to premierreport.com and feel free to comment on any of the videos via iTunes, Stitcher, or YouTube. So today we have John Wayne Mullins. He is an executive coach with a very fascinating background. So John, why don't you tell the viewers how you got into this, a little bit about yourself, and then we're gonna dive into some of your favorite conversations with those you coach. Oh, great. Thanks for having me, Shelly. I, I really uh, appreciate it. And anytime I get the chance to uh, open up the aperture on how coaching has changed my life and get to share about that, I'm just, I, I'm, I'm giddy because I, I knew you're going to say giddy. I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> yeah, just because I love it. Um, as a coach, I often get asked, you know, what what is coaching and how did you get into this? So I've got 19 years in the Coast Guard Reserves. Uh, I've got about 14 years on active, uh, and then the last four or five years, I was working with the U.S. government doing executive level coaching. And it was just about a year ago where I stepped off and actually created my own coaching and consulting company. And so where all this started was really in the military. Uh, throughout my entire life, I've just been fascinated by, by leadership and personal growth. And it was about 10 years ago where I was in that, that, that point in my life where I was looking for a coach, for a mentor, and for a leader to follow. And I, I couldn't find very many. Mm -hmm. And so thankfully, um, through my network, through my church, and through uh, a couple of different organizations, I came across John Maxwell. And I was like, this is amazing. And he was talking about this uh, coaching, speaking, and training uh, certification that he was going to be offering through his, through his company. And I was like, well, I already know I can trust you. We share the same beliefs and values. I'm on board. And so I jumped in and got certified under his organization. And it's really catapulted me in my own growth as a leader. And that's some of the same principles and values that I work with the, the coach, the clients that I often work with. Beautiful. So <clears throat> earlier when we were talking about setting this up, obviously we talked about the different uh, types of ways that you can mentor, coach, consult. Right. And uh, people have different views on those. And I dabble in all three of those myself because it, it comes down to what is it that uh, the, the person that you're talking to, what is it that they need? So out of that, why don't you tell the audience from a culture standpoint, the 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 places that you start because you work with some smaller group more one-on-one -on -one intentional conversations so why right. don't you talk about maybe some of the similarities that you've seen in your past life and your current life as a coach and, and kind of those threads because it's the conversations are common would you not right. agree oh yeah. uh, absolutely i think a lot of the commonalities is is especially from a culture standpoint is communication you can yes. tie that back to any type of relationship. I just went to a marriage conference with my wife a few weeks ago, and guess what the topic of conversation was? Communication. communication. <laughs> I always so, say it's the king and the queen of everything. <laughs> right. But from a uh, lots of times when I started working with organizations and, and, and we start discussing where they're at in their company and their culture, what I have been finding, a, a lot of commonalities is, uh, unawareness of that of that leader or of that team of leaders and so mm -hmm. what I mean by that is I just start to begin to ask them where are they at and where is their vision um, and is there a gap between where they are and what they actually want to achieve uh, yeah. furthermore on, on, w once I kind of get deeper into that I'll start asking them questions and asking their team questions about okay your boss or your leader CEO says that he's here is he really there yeah. And if there's a gap there, that tells me not only there, is there a gap between his perception and his vision, but there's a gap between him and his people. Yeah, absolutely. You know, uh, <clears throat> I just actually this morning, um, I just posted a video on 
where do you, where's the first place that you start when right. you want to shift a toxic culture? And yeah. because I'm, I'm asked that all the time and step one was the analysis and step two was the gap, was the very gap. much the gap. And, um, and oftentimes, uh, agree or disagree, leaders think they know the gap, but they're often wrong. Do you Way agree wrong. Disagree? Yeah, I, I agree with that. I'll share a, 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 fun, a, a perfect example. I recently took uh, a 360 assessment. I, I mm -hmm. used a leadership circle. It's a great mm -hmm. tool. And I, uh, I took it for myself and I sent it out to people who knew me, uh, mm -hmm. some of my old supervisors, people I've worked with. And when I took it, I marked myself high in one area and my yeah. peers said, no, you're down here. <laughs> and then where I marked myself low, they marked me self high. Yeah. So what does that tell you as a leader? If you're thinking that you're performing at this level mm -hmm. or even at this level, there, there's some, there's some mindsets there that you are way off and cause that's your operating system. Yeah. And you know, it starts with the self-awareness piece. Um, oftentimes again, you agree or, or disagree. Cause I, I, I like differences of opinion. So if you disagree, Feel, feel free, my cohort, Elizabeth Belize, can attest to that. We like to give uh, different right. sides. But <clears throat> some of the common conversations, um, to your very point, is when you get a 360, is oftentimes it's the self-awareness that's, that's off, again, to begin with. Mm -hmm. and so we are operating in a lens that is completely misaligned with either our body language, our tone, our actual words, and definitely our actions. And until you admit and recognize and realize you keep going off track. Again, agree, right. disagree. You will. Every time you'll continue to go off track. If you're operating under that, that same lens that has gotten, to, gotten you to where you are, mm -hmm. that's the same lens that you have. So if that's only going to take you to a, so far in life and business and leadership. You need the, the, the people around you who are supposed to be your trusted advisors to say, yeah. hey, John, uh, if we're trying to, if we're trying to create a culture of coaching or a, a culture of creativity and you're, you, you, you have your, uh, limited thinking hat on, or if you're so closed minded that you're not allowing people to come into your office and, and, and be creative, mm -hmm. are we really exemplifying that behavior? And yeah. so lots of times I feel like that gap is huge. Because, especially if that person is, is in a position of influence. Yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. and it, it makes conversations difficult. So let's come back and talk about a culture of accountability. Uh, but let's do that through the lens of a culture of coaching. Because you have, you have to, one, you know. Right. Right. There is no chicken and egg, in my opinion, first. You can't have accountability if we're not clear on, you know, expectations. So let's right. talk about what you have done or maybe some tips specifically around creating or first analyzing and figuring out the gaps to have a culture of coaching. So let's talk about that. What does that mean to you? And what are some things that you could give the viewers some tips to get started or to analyze it? Wow, that's a great question. Um, I think where I would start is to find out where you, it, just to make sure I understand the question right. If you mm -hmm. are wanting, you want me to share some tips that can raise that self-awareness piece? So ways that the self-awareness to even, it can be to begin the self-awareness level up. It could be around, you know, what is a culture of coaching? What does that look like? Okay. What are the components? Okay. So you, you take that the way you're the most comfortable. Okay, yeah, culture of coaching. Um, I, that's actually a, a great story because one of the things that when I started working for the government was they wanted to create a coaching culture. Mm -hmm. and, I, and the first question I got asked, even in the interview is how do you define coaching? What does yeah. that mean? Uh -huh. And they was like, Oh, it's, it's, we're trying to create a culture where we can have people have open ended questions and we want to be able to really provide our supervisors and uh, mid grade leaders the opportunity to get, uh, position for uh, future projects and growth and all that, but they they were confusing between mentoring and coaching because they they thought they were one and the same. And yeah. So oftentimes when I come into an organization, that's the first place I start is asking that question and yeah. then getting clear on what coaching and mentoring is. Yes. Now the way that coaching can really help a company culture grow 
is that coaching empowers that leader. It really opens the door to that self-awareness piece that we were talking about yeah. because I'm unbiased. I have no stake in, in the game. Granted, I do want to see you succeed, but mm -hmm. my, my purpose and a coach's purpose is to help you find that because yeah. I can't tell you the, the answers that you have. Only yeah. you can. Yeah. And that's where coaching can really make a leader grow exponentially because it opens the door to his own growth. Mm -hmm. So coaching is such a powerful tool to have because, again, I can ask you those pointed questions that your staff is afraid to ask. Yes. Because, you know, they could get fired or they, I mean, the, the, the relationship is so vi vital at that point, but mm -hmm. I can do that as a coach because one, mm -hmm. that's what you're paying me to do. Yeah. What are some questions that you typically ask as you begin a coaching endeavor to sort of uncover or establish that clearly there are gaps? What, what, are, what are some things that, that we as leaders could take away from today's conversation and go, hmm, let me think about that, or let me go ask my leader, or wow, how would I answer that? That's, yeah, that's great. Well, well, let me ask you this. Is, tell me about where you're at in life. Where, where are you at in, 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 in business or in growth or uh, in our company culture? Where are you at? Uh, let's, let's continue to talk about that. Where do you want to be in six months, nine months, a year? What are you trying to achieve? And, they say, and what okay. if they, go ahead, go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, and if they, I, I'm a big picture person. So if I come in and say, give me a 30,000 foot view of your organization. Mm -hmm. Okay. And we explore it. Where are you at in all of this? Okay. okay. That's, they tell me that. And are you in line with your company vision? Are you in line with your company culture? Mm -hmm. Tell me about your company uh, mission statement or your, your values. Mm -hmm. Oh, I don't know what they are. Mm -hmm. I often get that. Yeah. 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 And I've, you, I've, walked into a, I've walked into a company before and they had it up on the side of the wall, you know, their oh, mission, yeah. their vision and their core values. And yeah. so I walked into the meeting. I was like, hey, by a show of hands, who knows the company culture mission statement or who knows the core values? Yeah. Um, yeah. That is usually a telltale sign that Absolutely. something's going wrong. Absolutely. And most companies don't even have actual culture statements or culture books. Right. Um, they, they don't even, even exist, which always blows my mind away. It's like you, you've got to start there first. Yeah. Or like you said, it's the misalignment of the mission, vision, and values or the confusion right. between what's the difference still today. People are confused right. about what is a mission and what is a vision. And, oh, and, yeah. and they'll say, do I, do I need those? Do, oh, do we yeah. need both of those? Should you we really review do. those? How mm -hmm. often should we review those? Okay, so after you've uh, gotten some answers, and let's say that, that the answer on, on where do you want to be in six months, a year, five years, they, they can't answer that. What are some things that you say, okay, from a homework perspective, and this is where you kind of come out of the, the coaching a little bit and go into the consulting, but from a homework perspective, what would you say, you know, okay, well, we can't go further until we clarify that. Right. Here's some steps. So what are some, some tips and tricks you can give the, the listeners? Um, I would begin to help them almost kind of maybe do like a design thinking course and tell me a okay. little bit about your, your company culture, your company vision. Mm -hmm. uh, tell me what it is that you guys are trying to accomplish as a whole. Or, mm -hmm. you know, if I'm working with that client one-on-one, -on -one, tell me some of your own goals. Mm -hmm. and that's where I really like to start is what, what, what would you like to improve on as a leader, a communicator, a husband, father, wife, whatever, whatever area it is they're trying to grow in. Mm -hmm. Tell me about that. Okay. Well then it's, it's it based off that conversation. It sounds like you really want to do this. Am I right? Mm -hmm. And so then that's where I would say, okay, well, why don't we, for the next six months, let's, let's, let's work on this study. Or let's, mm -hmm. let's find a book or do a mastermind with your staff and say, hey, we've, we've uh, realized that we have a, a problem with our uh, inability to connect with our, our staff. Mm -hmm. Okay, so why don't we, for the next, you know, two months, three months, whatever, come together once a month, twice a month, and go through this, this book series and do a mastermind on that. I think this would really help us 
as a company, as a culture, as leaders to realize why aren't we, uh, why are we losing the ability to really connect with our audience, with our sales team, with our customers? <clears throat> so that, that's where I would tend to start because my, my thing is really helping them gain that awareness, but then giving them that homework piece because I want to work with them. And so right. I just don't want to, you know, one and done. It's all about helping them grow to that next level. And that's right. often where I, I, I really capitalize a lot of my time with with companies right. I work with. Yeah, I, um, you just said something interesting, one and done. Um, I, I, in my early years, you know, this is, this is now telling my age, but back when I was in the, you know, the typical corporate institution and, and wasn't deemed, you know, coaching or mentoring or, right. or any of that. And then as I came out of that and started my practice 10 years ago, uh, you know, I would have people say, you know, how long do typically people work with you? And I, I would always say, if you're not in this for at least six months, you're not really in this. So, you know, there is no, you didn't get yourself into this overnight and one session is not going to magically go, oh, I get it. <laughs> and it's also not about fixing right. a person. It goes back to what you started with, with what are the gaps? Mm -hmm. How are we misaligned? Right. Further defining that and putting together a, a mind map, a road map. Um, I love the design uh, thinking tactics behind that. Yeah. And then we can begin to move forward an inch at a time, you know, together. So I- Right, I, and it, it, oftentimes it takes me sometimes three to four months to really dig deep into that culture or that company to mm -hmm. figure out, here's the problem. Yeah. This, what's really going on. And so we, once we uncover that, now we can begin the forward momentum, mm -hmm. you know, of growth. But you know, on the flip side of all this, um, you know, I just don't work with companies who have problems or who are just like, hey, we're trying to figure out. Right. Um, but I met with this client yesterday, was I walked in and before I, before I met with them, I, I, was meet, I was speaking with the person at the front desk and I was asking her how she liked the job and what she does. And, how the, she likes this company and she's like you know i love this company i love oh, that awesome. i can come here and just uh, they help me to grow personally they help me it's all about team and environment and just like communication and mm. i was just like wow and so I, I i i told the the owner that i was like yeah. you know i'm really impressed with you guys how can we how are you ensuring that you're keeping that going yeah he was like i don't know that's a great <laughs> question <laughs> You know, and so that was my opportunity that to say, was, yeah, that was my opportunity to say, hey, why don't, why don't I come in, you know, in two weeks and do a, a lunch and learn for you guys and mm -hmm. see if this might be something that might be able to add value to mm -hmm. continue that growth, that environment, that culture that you've been so intentional about creating. Mm -hmm. Now it's time to make sure you keep it going. Yes. No, I love that you said that, you know, there's this huge wide gap in um, um, opportunities from the toxic. Um, right. And usually people, you know, again, when I started this 10 years ago, when people said, oh, executive coach, you have an executive coach, it was like you were in trouble. You were in the principal's office. And now yeah. it's like, oh, what's wrong with you? Why don't you have an executive coach? Because, you know, the reality is every article you read and tips from people who are deemed successful in the public, their morning routines is pretty consistent. And the fact that they have a coach is definitely consistent. We all oh, yeah. have coaches. I definitely have a coach and I uh, own that and wear that like a badge of honor because we can't see our own blind spots. Right. Um, and I, I love working with all of that spectrum. Um, but I really have to admit, I love working with the ones who get it and they want to just keep leveling up to your point. And sometimes they're just doing it intuitively and they don't realize it. And that in itself, like you said, is the opportunity because if you don't know what you're doing, you may slip and pivot out of it. So it's just as important to say where are we at for the root cause of the opportunity, but where are we at for the opportunity of success? And so I, right. I, I love that. And I think that's a great tip for the listeners is that what does success look like and what did we do and how did we get there? It's, it's right. like when you win a client, what did you do to get there? You, you know, execute a new, um, a new product or a, a new service line, or you get a new affiliate or, you know, there's growth or you add to your team. It's like, what did you do to get there is 
just as important, if not more, so you know you're on the, you're on the right track. Right. So, yeah. John, give us some final tips. Give us um, a favorite book. Uh, give us a quote. Give us a, yeah, you got a lot of books back there. Uh, give us, give us a tip, get, give us something. And then as a final comment, and then let the listeners know how to best get in contact with you if they would like to hear more from John Wayne Mullins. Thank you so much. Um, wow. Uh, as you can see, I'm a big reader. I got another bookshelf here on my wall. Um, big Maxwell fan. Mm -hmm. I'm currently listening to uh, Russell Bronson on ClickFunnels and going through his course, nice. um, which is just blowing my mind. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I don't know how many people are, are familiar with Strength Finders, yeah, um, but I, um, I'm a big fan of that tool. I'm a big fan of, of Gallup and what the, some of the resources they pr provide because um, I know my strengths, I know what I'm good at, and I know what I'm not good at. And mm -hmm. I certainly don't want to be investing my time and efforts and money in, in things that I'm just not good at. I'd rather or be not passionate about or I'm not passionate about uh, yeah. like tech. I'm not a tech person. Yeah. Nor do I want to be. Yeah. So I stay know what I'm lane. <laughs> Stay in your lane. And yeah. so if I could make a plug to any one person who is wanting either to grow the company or even grow themselves is asking them, what are your top five strengths? Find yeah. out what those are and then start there and, f and share that with your team. Yeah. It, it's 20 bucks to go through that course. You can get it through, through Gallup and, and take the assessment mm -hmm. um, because that, that tool opens the door up to that self-awareness piece. And so I would really encourage all the listeners to, to take that. And if they want to take that assessment, I'm, I, I'm certified to do that. I'd be happy to give them that, that, that give that to them. Um, a favorite quote. Um, wow. If you, if you have one, no, no yeah. pressure. Cause I didn't tell you to, <laughs> just so the listeners know, I am one of those organic type of interviewers and I never tell the person what I'm going to ask them. <laughs> no, that's, that's good. I, I actually pulled a few this morning. I was just kind of taking a look at some, um, wow. Yeah. If you, well, yeah, I don't know. Uh, that's, that's okay. Yeah. That's Oh, that's yeah. all right. I'll let you off. I'll let you off the hook. I will. Um, um, while you think about how you want the listeners, I, I, I echo your comment on Gallup and Strength Finders. And both of you and I work with the Honor Foundation. That's one of the right. tools that they use uh, to help uh, the, the fellows get to the start with wide piece, which is amazing. Right. I, many of my clients use that as well as um, I use predictive index on the behavioral side. So I find that that strength, uh, with the alignment of your why and certainly your behavioral strengths right. is just magic sauce to being right. able to, you know, stay in your lane and, and, and see your blind spots. We all have blind spots. And, we do. Uh, we do. And, and, yeah. and like you said, I don't, I don't want to, I want to know my blind spot, but I don't want to need the person to fill it. <laughs> yeah, I want to go find, find my, my yin and yang. All right. So yeah. John Wayne Mullins, what's the best way that we can look you up, contact you? Uh, JohnWayneMullins.com is my website, uh, okay. but then I'm pretty active on LinkedIn as well. So if you'd like to connect on there, I'd be happy to, you know, connect with you, follow you. And if you want to learn more about executive coaching or culture or design thinking, I'd be happy to, you know, do a, do a free strategy session with all my, with my first time clients. Beautiful. Well, thank you so much for your tips today, your insight, your stories. Um, I, I know the viewers got some things out of it and hopefully some tidbits that they can stop and think about themselves and maybe some questions they can ask their team about their alignment and their goals. And uh, we appreciate your time today. So that's it for today's Culture Hour. My name is Shelly Smith, the founder of Premier Rapport, where everything I do is obsessed around workplace culture and everything inside of that. If you would like to know more about having your organization take a culture inquiry to first analyze it before you can curate it and then create it, by all means, contact me on my website at premierreport.com. And of course, you can become a certified professional culture curator as well. Be more than happy to assist you and your team can come on site or you can register individually. And then finally, 
If you're still looking for more in a membership, I also have the Culture Curators in Conversation membership, which anybody who believes and is also passionate and obsessed with workplace culture, understanding all the dynamics about that. I've got many strategic partners who have lots of tidbits and a community full of other like-minded people. So again, you can reach out at Shelly at PremierReport.com or go to the website. So until then, stay tuned for the next episode of the Culture Hour and our, our another wonderful guest that I'm sure I will find to bring on. And don't forget to ask questions and comments. Thanks and have a day, great day, Culture Matters.